right, what's good, everybody? Are we good? We're up and running. All right, here. Hey, listen, uh, Dustin Tibbetts, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth. Welcome to the Doe Show. Wearing a different shirt today because Friday I will be out of town, uh, headed out to San Antonio, the Alamo Dome, to support Drum Corps International. This is one of the shirts. I'm going to try to find my other ones and wear them for the rest of the week. If you support me, you support these kids. If you know anything about this, uh, then you know it's a great, great organization. Uh, it's a great time, by the way. Uh, Drum Corps International, I'll do anything to support them. So by supporting me, of course, you know you support them as well. Also, we're going to talk about uh, car loans today. And if you want to get really specific, on our website, I believe it's still up at the top, uh, you can purchase a class, the budgeting class. I, I warn you, it's a very in-depth class. It's no joke. Uh, but we're, if you want to get specific about these areas, the big purchases in your uh, finances, we did a great class uh, in there. And so that class, I believe, is $65. All the proceeds will go to support everything this weekend and then next weekend in North Carolina, I'll be visiting them up there. Uh, so thank you so much for doing that. If you're one of our customers, don't you dare pay for that class. It is free to you. Just let me know if you didn't get it or you wanna rewatch it again or whatever. But we will see those of you uh, in San Antonio Saturday. We'll actually be there Saturday throughout the day. So if you're by the Alamo Dome or you happen to be going, stop by and say hi. Let me know where you're at. Okay, I'm gonna start today. I'm like, I'm shaking. I'm so excited with this. Uh, I'm gonna start today just sharing a quick story. If you're watching this after the fact, if someone would do me a favor and just post in the comments when the actual class starts, it'll be a minute or so from now. Uh, that'd be great, I love it when people do that. I wanna tell you about Joanne real quick before we get started. Joanne's probably watching, if not, she's playing catch up, but Joanne hit a milestone today at Jazz Wealth, and for, if you're not familiar with Jazz Wealth, we're financial advisors, we help you with your retirement investments, we help you get your dough straight, we invest in our own portfolios, 100% fiduciary. Check us out at jazzwealth.com. And Joanne saw the video a while back, uh, the $28 a week contribution video. And I've gotten a lot of grief for that video. I will take it because of people like Joanne. So you, the study was a raw study, of course, just general numbers. You might disagree with the assumptions in the study, but we've done a lot of other videos that uh, kind of vary those assumptions. The point is Joanne started with the $28 a week and she, we talked for an hour and a half the first time she joined me. She felt so embarrassed that she was starting so little. She thought she was like bugging me to ask questions. But I ask people, start small, right? I, I have nothing to gain by you just diving in all the way. If you can start small and it gets you started, great. So Joanne hit a milestone. Her account broke $1,000 today and some of you are laughing at that. I understand it. Some of you have a lot more money right, than $1,000, but Joanne didn't have her dose straight. She was a financial mess, to be perfectly honest, and she wouldn't mind me sharing that with you guys. I won't say her last name, of course, but she got to $1,000. And why I'm so excited about this is because she's excited. She got to the $1,000 mark when she wasn't going to get to any mark. She was not going to get started. She looked for advice. She spent hours online. She found us, of course, but Nobody was giving her the advice to get started. She couldn't start with such a small amount. She crossed a thousand dollars today So I'm perfectly excited with that I will take the bullets that people send to me uh, for that video because it motivated someone like Joanne to get started Incredible. So very very proud of you Joanne It means by the way and here's what Joanne did. She started with $28 a week We've been getting her dough straight. We've been working on it, right? Not so much debts, but where her money was going uh, just she didn't know she wasn't paying attention. So by doing that she went from 28. She went to 32 I, she, I, It was like a lucky number. She went to 32 now. She's at $55 a week Getting her getting it set right getting it going. So imagine how that's gonna go for her She's adding more and more and more and more increasing little by little when she can when it works for her She's not stressing herself. Okay, so one of the videos I want to do and it just I have to find the time to do the research I want to talk about at what point will Joanne's contributions lag behind the growth in her account? We did a video a while back on a consistent contribution, right? At 13.4 years, that's when whatever you're putting in, that's when your growth outpaces what you're putting in. And that's what I want people to get to. So incredibly excited for you, Joanne. Do me a favor, leave a comment for Joanne. Let her know you're proud of her too. I know you guys are all supportive. So uh, that's where I wanted to start with that. We help people get going and when that happens even on the smallest of scales joanne's still embarrassed to call or email me she thinks that she's bugging me i don't make any money off of that 
that's fine. That's what we do. I want to help. So really, really excited for Joey and I, I could, I could go on and on, but you guys are here to learn about car loan mistakes. So, uh, the dough show, this is what we're doing. We're talking about investing. A lot of the times we're talking about your dough. Sometimes we talk about budgeting. Sometimes if you're in that budgeting class or you check it out, of course, you know, you'll see more of that in the class, but I want to talk about car loans today. Something near and dear to my heart, because I think I'm the only guy that shows up at a car dealership and I'm like, this is nice. I like the music going on here, the jazz music in the background. They got food out for you nowadays. The bathrooms are super clean and everybody's super helpful. Where does all that money come from? Does all that money come from the fact that they're like, we're giving you rock bottom prices here. We're making like nothing on this, right? No, they're making tons of money off of you. Look at the dealership when you go in. My favorite one is there's a, a Mercedes dealership. They just built it. They advertise like crazy. It has got to be the most beautiful building I have ever seen in my life. Architecturally, if you're into that stuff, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I went there the other day. We were getting rid of my wife's car. She had a fancy car. We we're downscaling to everything. That's a whole separate video. Uh, went there to get something fixed that only they could fix. And they had soup. They had a buffet and there was soups. I tried like six different soups in this place. I'm like, I better get my money's worth because I know I'm paying for it. Ridiculous, right? So we're gonna talk about this today and I wanna focus on both the loan and as well as buying the car. So uh, in the budget class, of course, we'll go over those specific things for you. But I wanna talk about uh, not having an opinion here. I wanna give you some facts, right? Remember those dealers, when they uh, have a price that they're willing to sell the car for, it's based on a model. It has nothing to do with the friendly guy that you're talking to and he's all like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna work for you. My job is to get you the best possible deal. His job is to follow the model, the model of how he was taught to sell a car and then go to his finance manager or the sales manager and get the price that they can give you. That finance manager or the sales manager is just following a model. They don't just set these people free and say, go ahead and just give whatever deal you want. They're following a model. So as the consumer, why aren't you following a model? You should be doing the same. If they've got the stats and everything to back up what they need to make, nothing wrong with them making a profit, right? They gotta make something. But if they have a model to back that up, you should have your model. You should know where you're at so that you don't spend too much, okay? So I wanna focus on, uh, on that a little bit today. So we're gonna go over four quick tips and then we'll send you on your way. The first thing is it starts at the beginning. It starts with research, right? And you know that. Some of you will take this very seriously. I can think of a few names that I could mention that I know would take it very seriously. And others just show up and wanna buy a car and they're like, whatever the best deal is, I'll, uh, I'll go with that, that sounds good. Let me pose this to you. So, Let's say I went to you, anyone that's watching, and I said, I will give you $3,000 to do 10 hours of research for me. I'll pay you. I'll give you cash money to do 10 hours worth of research. I'm going to buy a car. Just tell me where to go, which one to buy, and I'll pay you $3,000. You know, there's a service that'll do that for you, by the way. It doesn't cost $3,000, but there are services that will buy a car for you and get the best possible deal they can. When I say that, if anybody, if someone says, here's $3,000, eat what's in this thing, I'm gonna eat the thing, right? I don't care what's on the spoon, right? Me and my daughter used to play a game when she had friends come over that uh, we'd play a game and whoever lost had to eat what was on the spoon and we'd go into the kitchen and mix up all kinds of nastiness and they'd have to eat the spoon. Well, if I said, if you told me, hey, Dustin, three grand, eat what's on this spoon, you better believe I'm gonna eat what's on the spoon. I don't care what it does to me, okay? So if I said, 10 hours of research, I will give you $3,000, I'm gonna buy a car. You would do it. I think everybody watching here would say 10 hours, $300 an hour, I'm in, let's do it. Take a day off of work, right? You would sit in front of that computer and do that research. Now, if I tell you that doing 10 hours of research is going to save you $3,000 on that car, would you do it, right? All of a sudden, it's a different thing. You don't get to touch the 3,000. It's not a bet, it's not a deal or an arrangement. It's, well, I might save the 3,000, I might end up with nothing, or I'm just gonna get confused, I don't know what I'm doing. This is the problem with people getting their dough straight is we don't touch the dough, we don't physically have it. A uh, long time ago, and I did a video on how I got started, but I used to own a printing company. And me and my partner, uh, our whole goal was just to build it up, to sell it. He was gonna go his separate way, I was gonna go my separate way. Uh, but we were gonna sell this company, the, the printing company. 
And uh, what we used to do, we had one customer that paid us, all, it was our biggest customer that paid us a lot. Uh, and when we would get that check, we'd go down to the bank, at the time it was Wachovia, we'd talk about companies that could disappear quickly, uh, and we would get the cash and we would touch the dough and we would talk about it. And it was funny because on the way there, we would talk about the Jaguar we were gonna buy and save up for all this or that. And when we had the dough, we were like, brother, get away from me. That's my dough, I'm not letting it go. We wouldn't even go out to eat because we were touching the money. So that's the problem with a lot of this car buying process is the numbers are just numbers. They're not physical money. So put yourself in that position that you have the physical cash and you're going out to buy this car. I guarantee you, you will do whatever research it takes to save that money on the car. So number one is research, right? It sounds a lot different when somebody wants to pay you versus when you're just going to save the money. Okay, number two, what are the terms? If you're gonna get a loan, what are the terms? Oh my God, we could do a whole video on this. In the budgeting class, of course, we talk about um, exactly, specifically, what length of time, what money, how you're going to account for all this in your budget. And at the very end, we come up with a payment. If you're focused on the payment, you've already lost. The game's over, right? And this is such a problem too, because in the uh, investment world, people fall into the payment when it comes to annuities. So nothing wrong with dealers, I'm not bashing on them at all, but when you focus on the payment, they won, you lost. You're not going to get a great deal, right? You may get what you think is a good deal, but you're gonna be upside down later, three, four years down the road, five years down the road, you're gonna be a little bit pissed because you're stuck, right? In the investment world, annuities offer that same sort of loss, right? You say, well, when I get to retirement, they're gonna pay me X number of dollars in retirement, and so how awesome is that? I'll have enough. What did you miss out on? What growth are you missing out on? How could it have been better? That's what you're missing out on. So I don't, I want you to focus on those terms for your budget, right? What we do in the budgeting class, we go through an exact plan to show you how you end up with the right priced car. And that's a big one because I know a lot of you uh, like that new Tesla deal where you don't have to uh, put a down payment down or uh, what do they call it? put a deposit down to uh, hold the car. Now, here's what I found out. The uh, Auto Association dealership, uh, auto, National Association of Auto Dealers or something like that, says a car lasts for 11.4 years. I think that's a little low, by the way. I'm just that's a little low. I think cars last a little longer. Uh, but that's what they say, 11.4 years. People hold the car, uh, meaning they'll keep that car for 71.4 months. That's how long people hold the car for. I think that is a fair number considering people have to hold their car that long, especially if you bought a brand new car, you pretty much have to hold it that long because what'd you do? You went with that 66 month or that 72 month payment, didn't you? Hmm? Be honest with yourself, that's what you did. And interestingly enough, what I found out, the average marriage lasts 8.8 .8 years. I don't know why I started down this statistic, but 8.8 .8 years, mm, right? Car, marriage, getting close there. <laughs> All right, but here's the thing. 71.4 months is how long you hold it. Interestingly, if you look back prior to 2006, uh, what was it? The average person only kept their car 4.3 years. Why is that? It's not because well, maybe some of it is because cars got a little better, right? In the last so many years, last decade, maybe things got a little better, but not that much better, right? Automation, everything already was taking place in 2006. We're not talking about the 80s here. So 4.3 years is how long people used to hold their cars for. Think about it, those loan terms were a lot lower. 2006, prior to the crash, interest rates weren't where they were. So people were not financing cars 72 and 84 months. We weren't going that far. As interest rates came down, all of a sudden you're like, hmm, I can afford a much more expensive car. Can you, right? You maybe could have afforded to buy the car, but now you're stuck and you had to wait the 71.4 months just to get away from the car. You don't want the car anymore because it was a fancy car. And now that it's five years old, six years old, it's costing you some money to get it fixed, right? Personal experience, I can, uh, I can attest to that. I don't claim to be all perfect with my dough, uh, but getting it straight there. So uh, that's the thing. So 4.3 years, they kept it because they were upside down. The, now you tell me, um, and I get this one with the credit card 
video all the time where people say, I'm part of the 6%, man, where I, uh, my, uh, I only use credit cards for the rewards and I don't pay them any money. 6% of you do that. So when I get like 50 comments from people that say, yeah, I, I, that's me. I totally get the best out of my rewards program. Somebody's lying in that group, right? Somebody's just trying to seem great online and that's okay. What am I going to do? I don't, I don't care. So, uh, oh, let me put that up there. So you got 10% of you will, oh, I'm sorry, 12, uh, there we go. 10 years or longer, only 12.9% of you will hold a car that long, right? I could, I could see if you did. I can understand some of you that would do that. But when you tell me, Dustin, doesn't matter how long of a car loan I get, I'll take the lowest payment because I'm keeping this car forever. Only 12.9% of you are doing that. So somebody's lying, right? Somebody's not telling the truth or they just didn't expect some life change after six years or seven years. They go to sell the car and they can't, right? So there is an exact formula. A long time ago, I'm talking a long time ago, I was in high school. See, I got, I got, I'm balding down here. I, I might look like young in the face a little bit, wear the young shirts, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not so young. <laughs> Anyways, long time ago, uh, my economics project in high school, senior economics project, no, junior economics project, was to um, do a study on, on anything finance that had to relate to loans or uh, home purchase, car purchase. And I did a study on buying a three-year-old Porsche every three years. I was just interested in Porsches at the time. So I did that study and I'll, I'll have to dig it up and share it with you because the math on that's incredible and still works to this day, by the way, if you're interested in Porsches. But here's what I want you to do. Know the terms of your loan. The term of your loan is not going to be 60 months. I don't care if you're buying a brand new car or not. The term of your loan is not going to be 66 months, 72 months, the Tesla 84 month. You're not gonna do it, right? It's gotta be less, period. I don't care if interest rates are low. I'm not uh, opposed to getting a loan for a car, by the way. So a lot of people are like, you know, debt, 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 can't have it. Most debts, I agree with you. A car loan, a home loan, at this point in life, it's not horrible, right? You may decide otherwise, but uh, it's not horrible. So I want you to figure out exactly the terms of that loan, okay? And it's not 60 months, there's a hint. It's not 72, it's not anything greater than that. Okay, that's kind of an obvious one. I mean, that's sort of general right there. Next thing I want you to do, get your credit straight, right? Nobody looks at this. You know what this forces you to do? If I tell you to get your credit straight before you go buy a car, you know this forces you to plan ahead. The car is one of your bigger purchases in your life. Why are we not planning ahead for it, right? When uh, we were shopping for a car for my wife, we were sitting at this dealership. We ended up not going, I ended up buying a different car at the dealership from another company, by the way. I did a whole video on it. Um, but while we were sitting there, this lady was, she just came in and she's like, I need something in this price range with this, with this payment. I, I wanted to like smack the lady. Like I was wearing the jazz shirt and I'm like, ah, go, please let me help you. She didn't care. She wanted a payment. She wanted a price. Of course the price was much higher, but the payment, they got her where she wanted to. It was so interesting to hear this story. She obviously did not have her credit straight or she would not have walked right in and just said, I'll take whatever you got, right? ridiculous. Don't do it. So getting your credit straight forces you to plan ahead. Why? Because over 50% of your credit score has to do with history. Has nothing to do with the fact that you're like, well, I paid off this credit card and so I'm ready to buy a car. No, it has to do with history. So you need time to pass. You need to plan ahead for buying a car, buying a house, buying a private jet. I don't care whatever you're buying. You need to plan ahead, get your credit straight. So, so, so important to do that and that'll focus you to do this. You do not buy a car on a whim. Most of you know that, right? Anybody watching the Doe Show regularly, you know, you're not just gonna run out there and buy a car. I'm gonna reach out on the computer and just smack you if you do that. So you plan ahead. 50% of your FICO score, has to, oh, over 50%, has to do with your credit history. There's no quick fix here. So, and, and I'll compliment a lot of our customers because they'll let me know, I'm buying a car in two years, Dustin. I think I can make it two years on this car. What do I do when I get there? Okay, you think the answer is gonna be, well, let's start putting some money aside. No, that's part of it. But we're starting to look at your credit, right? We want you to pull your credit report, make sure it's accurate. We want you to go find your FICO score, whether you use a, 
those apps or your credit card maybe tells you what it is or your bank sometimes they'll tell you your credit score your FICO score on there uh, when you get your statement right so start planning ahead could mean the difference of truly thousands of dollars and as interest rates rise it's gonna be more than that right so a good credit score is very important doesn't have to be perfect but it's it's very 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 important one per, at this point right now the average uh, uh, car loan rate for 60 months I'm not gonna do 60 months uh, a 1% difference could save you about eleven $1 hundred dollars a 1% difference in your uh, the rate that you pay for the car loan so if you're gonna go get a car loan get your credit straight okay it has it has maybe 10% to do with the cash you want to put down the terms that you're gonna do the research and everything get your credit straight I think you guys uh, I think you guys get that okay and the fourth one this one's pretty simple here but I'm gonna touch some sore spots here shop 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 right you did the research you know where you realistically should be you got your credit straight which means you planned ahead and I'm happy so you planned ahead I'm happy with that now you're gonna shop fellas think of the things you shop for that are ridiculous and you spend all kinds of time picking it apart figuring out the best deal if you live in Florida or anywhere along the East Coast there or anywhere along the coast and you know somebody that's a boat guy likes to buy boats and he's all into his boat fixing it and fishing and all that stuff it's horrible down here in Florida you know how guys pick apart the hinges on the boats right the draft oh my god is it gonna get me where my favorite fishing spot is propellers oh my god don't don't start on a propellers right which propeller is best how many blades what should the pitch be if you got three motors which one should counter rotate and how's that going to affect your whole balance and everything oh my god it's all my friends talk about because they're boat people and that's fine but the point is the research that they do on a boat and what they're going to do granted the boat may be more expensive than the car but the research and how they shop around going and touching and moving things going to different boat dealerships and like putting it up to the trailer and figuring out if it's good enough for them or whatever incredible take a little time do some research and then shop around pick apart what you want that much right that's the guys right man cave your TVs your PlayStations and all that stuff you pick it apart you know the details about all that beer some people in their beer they know more about beer than I know about finance it's incredible what you know about beer so take some time make it a priority get excited about it pick a car that you're excited about and compare those right as long as it's within the price range then you're good women wouldn't be right if I didn't pick on you too my wife We'll drive an hour and a half to go to Orlando to a certain mall and spend all day there, right? Now, I kind of like it because I'm, you know, I get the house to myself and it's all good, but an hour and a half she'll drive and then an hour and a half back and she'll spend all freaking day there, right? So now it's fine, right? She's good. She knows what she's doing. But the point is you spend all that time. What is that? $100, $200 for the day if she's going to go have a good time? That's nothing, right? We can recover from any of that damage that she does, but a car, you gotta shop around for that thing, you know what I mean? And then a bonus tip, I wanna throw a bonus tip in there. Credit unions, by the way, no longer the best place to get a loan, right? You can look up any study here and see that people are moving away from credit unions and unfortunately heading back to the larger companies and some of them have been rather crafty with how they try to hide the fact that they're large companies. A great example, is a company called SunTrust. You've heard of SunTrust Banks, uh, SunTrust Bank, right? Big bank, that's fine. They came up with this bright idea. We're not gonna offer loans through SunTrust Bank. We don't want people thinking I'm dealing with a big bank and so therefore it might be better if I go to a credit union. What they thought was let's start a whole separate division online only and make it only, you know, online to get the car loan there and just put it at the very bottom by SunTrust Bank, right? It's called Lightstream, and so I don't have any connection to them, or I'm, I don't get paid by them, but I use them. I bought a classic truck, and uh, I was weighing the decision between paying cash or getting a loan, and I thought, they're going to rip me off. This is going to be too much. It was either I used the cash or 2.8% on a classic car loan, a 1954 truck. They were willing to give the money to at 2.8%. So you have the option of either A, investing the money, obviously I'm confident in what I can invest in, one of our portfolios there, or B, I could give up all that cash and have this 
asset, which, you know, maybe it'll grow in value. It has grown a little in value, but it, unfortunately, a lady slammed into it and she totaled it. <laughs> so that's that. But uh, so I had to make that decision. And a company like Lightstream beat every other company that there was out there or the larger banks and my local credit union, which I know very, very well. I, I, I love my local credit union. But the point is they ended up coming in cheaper. And so you're finding more and more of this online. Reputable companies backed by the big banks that just are choosing to do loans in a different way, more of a digital sort of a uh, thing like that. Now, there's no customer service. I've never had to call them for anything, but uh, it, it was perfect, right? It worked out really, really well. So I want you to think of that as well. Shop around not only for the car. I'm not necessarily talking about the, the car and the fixings and all that stuff. I'm talking about where you're going to get that money. So I hope that helps there for you. Sort of a short one today uh, to cover that. I probably could have done eight different uh, things. So maybe we'll revisit this again. Uh, Bruce. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John, big fan of getting a loan, uh, not paying cash for the, oh, you're, you against the loan. That's cool. No, I'm totally for that. If you think that paying cash for a car is the way to go, what I like about that is it probably makes you buy a less expensive car because at some point you really got to weigh the difference between the money you're paying to borrow the money versus what that money can do. And there was a brief moment in time, it's pretty close right now, we're putting the money in a high interest savings account with zero risk, almost pays for that car loan. So there's some arguments that I could have for that, uh, but I'm not opposed to someone that says, nope, cash is me. I'll get a new car every three years, but I'll pay less. And you know, whatever you want to do there is fine. So that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> what's a car loan? Nice. Oh, you like the whiteboard. All right, perfect. Uh, you bought a car in December, five and a half percent interest rate uh, for really long term uh, that I'm regretting. How long should I wait until after buying a car to try to refinance? That may not be up to you, by the way. Uh, refinancing has gotten a lot tougher these days as far as what banks are willing to do. They are, uh, rightfully so, they're not really willing to just sort of, when refinancing with the same bank is really renegotiating the terms essentially. Uh, and they are not as uh, flexible as they used to be. When there were small changes in interest rates, didn't matter so much, but now that interest rates are going like this, creeping up, well, relative to history, uh, they're a lot less flexible. So you may want to uh, look into some, you may want to be specific about that one. Uh, maybe we could talk about it. Maybe it's something I can help you with. Um, okay, that's all I have for you guys. Uh, really appreciate you watching. Uh, I, again, huge, huge excitement here for Joanne uh, and then everybody that's coming along here that's also doing just as well. Great, I just Joanne happens to stick out to me because we had that conversation. So uh, really appreciate uh, all that you guys have done for us. Good job, Joanne and uh, at least recommend getting leases. <laughs> no, that's a whole different animal there, right? John's with me on that one. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, so uh, we'll be back at five o'clock. Check out The Closing Beat, our new show uh, at five o'clock going over the stock market. Lots to talk about today already so far. So we will continue with that. We'll see you again at five o'clock. Leave a comment, let Joanne know you're proud of her. And uh, if you're in San Antonio on Saturday, uh, by the Alamo Dome or Riverwalk. I think we're going to do the Riverwalk thing too. Happy to see you there. Enjoy. Talk to you later, guys. Why should you choose Jazz Wealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.